Shalom, Ya Sharada. First and foremost, I'd like to start this lesson by giving all praises, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Racha Kwadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well and taught me this 100% truth. Double salutations to the Archeum out there. Spreading this word in truth and sincerity And shalom to the few Akwath that's listening in today I'm back at you with another lesson entitled Do not take that sea hip Okay If you put the, the, the sea and the hip together you, You'll get the word that I'm trying to say Alright, because we know this is a wicked device of Satan Which Satan, the physical counterpart of Satan is none other than Esau Edom, aka the so called white man. <laughs> you know? Basically, what's happening is he, he's trying to get his birthright back that he sold to his brother Jacob, all the way back in the book of Genesis, alright? For, for, um, for a piece of meat, you know, for some pottage, for some food. Okay, you see, but really and truly, that was set up in the spirit. That birthright was never meant for Esau Edom. But the Heavenly Father, he, he set it up that way where pretty much um, Jacob supplanted his brother. You see? So, you know, Esau was disappointed then when he'd given up his birthright for a piece of meat. And then, you know, He's going to be supplanted again when he, you know, when he had tries to establish his new world order, you know, he implements the MOTB, which is the mark of the B-E-A-S-T, right? And then, and then, and then, you know, just as he th thinks he's uh, fulfilled his, his, uh, you know, he's gone through the, the hardship to try and bring forward his NWO, you know, then, then the Heavenly Father is going to reign, um, you know, the fierceness of his fury upon him man and and then once again jacob the israelites are going to be are going to be placed in their rightful position as the rulers of the earth under yahweh shai so you see if I, so you see esau edom really and truly he's a two-time loser man you know the worst the worst thing that 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 you could be right now is an edomite okay because not only are they going to lose their kingdom They're going straight into captivity Now Yes, the other nations Will also be going into captivity But Esau, Edom's captivity Is going to be the harshest, man And, and you see Once the nations have served their a thousand years Of hardcore slavery to the nation of Israel They're going to be uh, appointed their land all right, they're, they're going to be appointed their portion of land here on the earth, right? But then, what's going to happen to Esau Edom? Esau Edom is going to be completely done away with, man. You see? Esau Edom is going to be completely done away with, and that's proven... <laughs> excuse me. In the book of Obadiah, 1 and 18. <clears throat> Esau, the Edomites are going to be gathered into a pit and burnt, man. You know, because because we, their purpose would have been fulfilled. We no longer, you know, the word Satan goes into deceive. All right, the, we we no longer need the deceivers of the earth. All right, because the only Esau Edom was created to be wicked. All right, but the kingdom of Israel is going to be a righteous kingdom. So we ain't gonna have no need for the wicked anymore Alright, so you know Very soon We ain't gonna have to behold these devils, man You know, never we, we ain't never gonna have to see a A, a, um, um, a so-called white person You ain't gonna have to see these Edomites ever again And that's and that's beautiful, man All praises to Yahweh Ba Hashem Shai. That's beautiful Alright But sticking to the point Do not take that sea hit which Esau Edom is going to try and force on you, man. 
All right, because as Elder Apostle Gabar always likes to say, these Edomites are the harbingers of death. All right, you can't follow them because their ways lead to death, man. You follow after Esau Edom, you're, you're following after death. You see, they rule in wickedness, and there's no um, um, um. The wisdom of wickedness is not wisdom, man. All right, but this wisdom of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai, this knowledge that we receive, you know, is eternal life, man. You know, so in this truth, there's life, but in following Esau Edom, there's death, suffering, destruction, unrighteous decrees, so on and so forth. Okay. So without further ado, let's bring out the precepts. And you know, I, I ain't got no precepts lined up. I'm just flowing in the spirit, man. But you know, um, I'm gonna be talking about the MOTB a lot more because we are living in that time. And um, um, you know, we have to stress the importance of not taking that, that C hit, man. You know? Because there's the, you, you can't repent from that point onwards You know Once you take that C hip You're saying to the Heavenly Father I don't need you Esau Edom is my God He's my master You know uh, Back in the day In the ancient world You know When you, when you was happy to, 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 to be under your master you, you would be hit up, you know, you, you'd be um, given an O, A-U-L, right? Which was like a, um, what's the, what's the, how can I say it? Which was like a, um, um, a hole that was made in the ear of that slave, that servant, to say that, that you are happy to serve your master perpetually. You was given an O, okay? But now what Esau Eden is trying to hit you up with is that digital O, A-U-L. Right, if I if you can't understand my accent, the digital O, which will be that MOTB. So basically, once you take the MOTB, you're saying to the Heavenly Father that you're happy for Esau Edom to, to, to be your master. Esau Edom is your God. That's what you're saying to the Heavenly Father, and and you know, from that point onwards, it's not like you can then uh, uh um um what's the what's that get get some um like some tweezer sort of thing. And remove the sea hip Or you, you go and cut underneath your flesh And remove the sea hip No man and, and you know what Another reason you shouldn't take the sea hip Is actually in the book of Leviticus Where it states that we shouldn't make any cuttings in our flesh And by you Taking that sea hip You are making a cutting in your flesh man You see So you know The elect of the nation of Israel They're not going to take that sea hip man Alright the Lord stresses so many times in the scriptures that, you know, to trust in the Lord, he will protect us, you know, but that takes faith because, you know, all odds are going to be stacked up against us, man. And, and to be honest with you, some of us are even going to have to lose our lives for this truth. You know, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. All right. But those who die in Hamashiach, which Hamashiach means the anointed one, who is Yahweh Shai. Um, they shall be raised up first And then the elect Who, are, who remain alive will, will, will be joined onto them In the clouds Alright In the chariots man And really and truly We shouldn't fear death man Because you know It's, it's not like you're going to some uh, Eternal place of damnation You know hell And you're just burning in fire Well really and truly What's going to be hell is that nuclear destruction You know when you die Your body Your, your spirit rests You go to the spirit world man you know, the, uh, the apostle Paul He went into that <clears throat> In um, 2 Corinthians 5 And you know Apostle Paul he, he actually died And he came back to life You know he was stoned to death And his, his spirit went into the spirit realm And he said that it, it was so beautiful And um he said something along the lines of it wouldn't have been lawful for him to 
describe what he had seen but you know not to say he, he would have sinned if he were um was to tell you what he'd seen in the spirit world but basically the spirit world was so beautiful and like nothing he'd ever seen that um um that he, he couldn't find a word to utter the beauty of the spirit realm man all right the fourth dimension you see so really and truly death is nothing to be feared man that only means that we'll be closer to the lord and 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 and, and you know we'll be with our brothers man the angels okay those that remain in their first first estate you know so we need not to fear death man but anyways let, let's bring out the precepts this is psalms 21 and verse 11 and it reads for they intended evil against thee who none other than esau edom man you see and, and the thing is they're gonna paint it as if the MOTB that oh that that you know it, it, it it's gonna help you, you know. The scriptures talk about how you know they was given power to, to do miracles on the earth to deceive them, you know. It's, it's, you know they're gonna um, push that oh you take the MOTB, you no longer need your car keys, you can just open your car with just your hand. Um, if you're blind, if you take the Neuralink implantable brain see hip then then you, we can restore your vision um you know you don't need to worry about losing your wallet anymore because you know your money is all linked here you don't need to you know in the uk you've got an nhs number and stuff you don't need to know or remember your nhs number because everything is going to be on the see hip you know and that's how they're going to advertise it and obviously you know how long will you simple ones love simplicity? Romans, Romans, so like you, Proverbs 1 and 22. You know, the simple minded are gonna follow after it. Oh, yeah, but you can do this, you can do that. Oh, this is revolutionary. And they're gonna, they're gonna be deceived, man, and they're gonna take it. And there's gonna be a consequence for that, which we will get into, Lord willing. All right, so Psalms 21 and 11 For they intended evil against thee, they imagined a mischievous device which they are not able to perform. You see, and 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 they're not gonna able, they're not gonna be able to perform this in the fullness of how they would like to. All right, and the scripture to prove that is Job twenty. And twenty two. And it reads, In the fullness of his sufficiency he shall be in straits. So you know, as Esau Edom is trying to establish this uh new world order and trying to implement this micro c hip you know he's gonna have a hard time doing so there's gonna be a lot of resistance you've got this truth going out all right you got you got the whistleblowers uh speaking out on esau edom's craftiness his wickedness speaking out on his plans okay so straits s-t-r-a-i-t-s means a, posi a, p a position of difficulty man you know it's not as it's not as smooth sailing as he thought it was gonna be. All right, verse twenty-three. When he is about to fill his belly, the Most High shall cast the fury of his wrath upon him. You know, so just when Esau Edom's about to say, "Ah, we did it, man. Yeah, it was hard, but we did it." That's when the Heavenly Father is gonna cast the fury of his wrath upon him, man. You know. So you see Esau He's a two time loser Because he, he's, he spent so much money Invested so much time In trying to implement This digital currency This digital system And really this is nothing new man You know when you go back To the Tower of Babel You know what was they Trying to establish then That one world order So this is how you know As the scripture says There's nothing new Under the sun right There's nothing new Under the sun And, and you know these are the same spirits that were back then Okay The scripture does Promote the idea Of reincarnation Right So um Verse 23 again When he's about to fill his belly The most high shall cast the fury of his wrath upon him Right So like you bear with me Shall cast the fury of, of, of his wrath upon him And shall rain it 
upon him while he is eating. You know? So Esau Edom, he's not going to be able to establish and fulfill his, uh, his wicked intentions, man, his NWO. And then right after that, his next stop is slavery. You know, the destruction of his kingdom and then hardcore slavery, man. You see? So you wouldn't want to be an Edomite. That's for sure, man. The last thing you want to be in this time or ever is an Edomite. You know? Let's quickly um, bring out the, the precepts, which, of course, if you're seasoned in this, you already know. But, you know, as I said, we need to be pushing this prophecy majorly, man, because we are in that time. And this will um, determine whether you receive salvation or judgment from the Lord. Okay? This is the book of Revelation, chapter 13. And uh, you know what? We're going to start at verse 14. Um, but what I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have to do a quick part two. And um, I'm, I'm going to put the two videos together because, uh, you know, I just need to get out of the car real quick. I just need to go grab some stuff. And once I get back in the car, I'm going to continue where we left off. So just bear me a moment. Um, so, yeah, I'm continuing on, right? Uh... So this is the book of Revelation, chapter 13, and uh, we'll start at verse 14, and it reads, And deceiveth them, oh, almost hit a bird, damn, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast which had uh, the wound by the, by a sword and did live. So you see Esau Edom, he's going to be able to deceive this world by way of these uh, uh, miracles. You know, if you can't see, you get the MOTB, you can see now. Um, you don't You don't need to carry keys around anymore. You can pretty much just um, use your hand to open doors, get in your car, so on and so forth. You don't need a wallet anymore. All right. And this is how the world is going to be deceived, man. All right. And they're, they're, they're going to they're gonna walk right into his trap. You know, it's, 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 like trying to, it's like trying to catch a mouse. You know, you, you, you set that cheese next to, the, next to the trap and then boom. As the mouse tries to grab the cheese, you know, you snap him. All right? That's that's pretty much what's going to happen to the people of this world, man. Okay? Excluding the elect. Um, verse 15. Wait me a minute. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. Now this ain't a picture of, of <laughs> Cesare Borgia, all right, aka Jesus Christ. The image of the beast is 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 um 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 this new system, man. This new world order. That's the image of the beast. You see. Um, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. That the image of the beast should both speak. And cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And this is why in 2nd Ezra 16, it says that uh, it speaks about the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled upon you. Upon who? The elect. Those who refuse to, to, to be tied into this digital uh, beast system. Alright? You know... The devil, he's pretty much going to set bounties on our heads. You know, he's going to... Um, he's going to have the people hunt us down. You see? That don't that don't bow down. They need to bow up. 
you know but you know in Isaiah 59 and 19 it says that when the enemy shall come in like a flood then the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against them man so you know brothers are going to get spiritual power you know angels are going to intervene and deliver uh, um, the elect out of certain situations so you see even though it looks like all odds are against us um, we still have to trust in the Lord which is why I going into my lesson yesterday uh, keep pushing I said how the Lord has got us going through certain situations in our own lives right now where you may feel like your back's against the wall and pretty much the only thing you can do all right is trust in the lord okay because ultimately we're gonna have to get used to that man you know we're going to be living in very uncertain times where you know we, we ain't gonna know where our, me our next meal is coming from how we're gonna get it but through faith in your Shim your shy we know we will get it man all right but but as i said that takes faith and trusting in the lord you see because you need to remember we are heading into the worst time ever in the history of mankind you know this is the worst time ever man so we need to be um we need to go through the spiritual boot camp so that we can um be prepared for the trial that we're about to endure Okay So this is verse 16 And he calls of all Both small and great Rich and poor Free and bond To receive a mark in their right hand Or in their foreheads man You see <gasps> And that's talking about the sea hip Okay This is what's going to be inserted in your hand Or in your forehead You got um, <gasps> Excuse me you got Elon Musk doing tests for uh, his Neuralink. All right. On the other hand, you have um, this digital infrastructure being set up right under our noses, man. You know, why, why do you think all these major banks are closing all of a sudden? You know, why do you think now you're hearing talks of like smart cities, 15 minute cities? You know, 2nd Ezra 15 says a man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able Because pretty much what they want to do is set up these smart cities, these 15 minute cities Where everything that you would possibly need is within 15 minutes of, of, of travel Alright so, so you ain't allowed anywhere, you ain't, you ain't allowed out of that 15 minute zone You know, and this is the devil, I mean this is the, the world that this devil is, is, is creating right now under our noses but yet you got two-thirds of our people who want to look at us like we're wicked when we're, when we're praying for the downfall of this place and the destruction of the Edomites they're looking at us like we're wicked but I mean you don't even know what the nation of Edom has got prepared for you man and here we are trying to give you the warning trying to give you the warning from the Lord as well and, and, and you know we're, we're seen as the bad ones man But it is where it is You know The scripture says that the deceived and the deceiver are his So You know Just count yourself blessed That you have this wisdom, knowledge and understanding man You know What does it say Blessed are your eyes for they see And blessed are your ears for they hear Some, Something to that effect uh, But, but it, you know To have this wisdom, knowledge and understanding Is truly a blessing from Yahweh Ba Hashem Yahweh man Faith is a gift The scriptures say that faith is a gift man You know that's actually a gift That's nothing to uh, be taken for granted Because we're going to be saved through faith Okay So uh, let's continue reading Revelation 13 And uh and 17 and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the b-e-a-s-t or the number of his name all right so you ain't going to be able to buy or sell unless you have this um, uh, mark 
you know. So that means no work for you, no no eating Nando's, no gauchos, no Vapianos, whatever it is, man. You know, that's all gonna come to an end. Okay, it's no more. But you know, the elect of the nation of Israel, we need not to worry about that. All right, and the scripture to back that up is Isaiah. Chapter 65 And um, 13 And it reads Because you know You got all these uh, um, These like doomsday preppers Who are uh, uh, Stockpiling all this food And um, You know Preparing for, 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 for the times that we're heading into But really and truly Who are they stockpiling this food for? That's the elect, man. You know? They're, they're really stockpiling this food for the elect because they're not even going to be able to eat it, man. That's food for us, man. Okay? So this is Isaiah 65. And uh, 13. And it reads, Therefore, thus saith the Lord Yahweh, Behold, my servant shall eat but ye shall be hungry Behold My servant shall drink But ye shall be thirsty You know So you ain't gonna have You ain't gonna have no food or drink In that day man You know You got Esau Edom Talking about You eat the bugs You know You got, you got Klaus Schwab Talking about You will eat the bugs And you will be happy You know So so really and truly You're, you're, you're getting this sea hit to be a part of this system And all that's on the menu is bugs and And all sorts of abominable things So, so Really, what's it worth, man? You know Was it worth Taking that sea hit When you can't even eat food that you'd want to eat You might even have to eat shit Literally, man You know So what was it all for? But the elect ain't gonna have to worry, man you know, and, 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 you know, there's nothing impossible to Yahweh Ba'ashim Shai. When we was being delivered out of the land of Egypt and we was in the wilderness, didn't the Lord uh, provide us with manna from heaven? You see? So we're heading into a time where miracles are going to be taking place. All right? The left-hand side is going to deceive the world by way of their miracles, you know, um, with their with their sea hip. And then the Lord is going to, uh, um, um, you know, provide us with miracles on the right hand side Spiritual power, divine intervention, various other things man You know, what, is, what does it say in John 14? It says, um, um, uh, you know what, let's just get that real quick This is John 14 and verse 12 Yahweh Shai speaking Verily, verily I say unto you He that believeth on me The works that I do Shall he do also Right And Yahweh Shai did many great works Many great miracles man Okay And greater works than these Shall he do You see Greater works than these shall he do So, so Yahweh Shai is telling us that we're going to be performing even greater acts than he did You see And it takes faith to believe that man It takes faith And, and, and that, that will happen You know And it's getting ready to happen furthermore Okay Greater works than these shall ye do Okay, so so. <laughs> um, that brings me You know what, that makes me want to bring out this scripture This is the book of uh, No, not Zechariah I want Zephaniah 3 And 8 Therefore wait ye upon me Alright, we're meant to wait on Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai You know Proverbs 3 and 5 Trust in the Lord with all thine heart And lean not unto thine own understanding Right? Okay So we need to wait upon the Lord 
and you know he's gonna he's gonna provide brothers with the ability to defend themselves in the time of trouble all right divine intervention will be taking place for the elect of the nation of israel man zephaniah 3 and 8 therefore wait ye upon me saith the lord until the day that i rise up unto the prey all right the lord he's gonna fight for us man and that takes faith to believe that the lord is gonna fight and make a way for us you see until um until the day that i rise up to the prey for my determination is to gather the nations. This is ultimately what's going to happen, right? When all is said and done, the Lord is, you know, he's going to uh, bring the nations together for that for that great uh, third world war. All right? Which will bring the destruction of Esau, Edom's kingdom, his rulership. All right? For my determination is to gather the nations that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them mine indignation, even all my fierce anger. For all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. And that fire is going to come by way of those nuclear missiles. Okay. And um, 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 the concentrated fire, the laser beams from them chariots, man. And even Esau, he's, he's, got, um, he's got weapons that, that um, pretty much shoot lasers, man. You know, there's a video I saw. He pretty much lit up a whole car, man, by way of those laser beams. He, he turned that car into a crisp. All right, so so you know all you carnalites, you, you carnal Israelites who believe that you can fight Esau Edom with his with his blessing, which is the sword. You 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 are surely you 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 are um um you're surely mistaken, man. And you're gonna find out the hard way. The only way we're gonna be able to prevail against Esau Edom is by Yahweh Hashem uh bringing forth divine intervention, man. Having the angels fight for us. Brothers being raised up with spiritual power Okay So anyways going back to Isaiah 65 This is Isaiah Chapter 65 I'm uh, back at verse 13 Okay Thus, Therefore thus saith the Lord Yahweh Behold my servant shall eat But ye shall be hungry Behold my servant shall drink but ye shall be thirsty Behold my servant shall rejoice Okay uh, But ye shall be ashamed And why are you going to be ashamed? Because you trusted in Esau Edom man Jeremiah 17 and 5 says Cursed be the man that trusteth in man And make a flesh his arm So because you made flesh your arm Alright You you trusted in, 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 in Furthermore you didn't just trust in man You trusted in your enemy man when the scripture says in Sirach 12 and 10 To never trust thine enemy man Never trust thine enemy man And you know what we're going to go there um, in, in, in a second man Alright My servants uh, shall rejoice but ye shall be ashamed Verse 14 Behold my servants shall sing for joy of heart But ye shall cry for sorrow of heart And shall howl for vexation of spirit When you realise you've been deceived when you realize that you're that you've completely um, lost your chance of salvation, you're gonna be howling for vexation of spirit. Because then it's gonna be made very apparent the judgment that's coming for Esau Edom, you know, World War Three. Uh Second Edges 15 and 5 talks about the sword, famine, death, and destruction. And you're gonna have to be a part of that. That's why you're going to be howling for vexation of spirit Because, you you know That rude awakening Which all the prophets of the Lord You know, those who sincerely believe We've been waiting for that moment of that rude awakening, man You know, because you 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 people don't take us seriously We think, you think this is just a joke Alright and, and, and we're here Laboring in vain Not knowing that, that, you know There's going to be a consequence For rejecting the words of the Lord you know, Hosea 4 and 6 My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, man Because thou hast rejected me I will also reject thee That's, that's, that's what, the, that's what uh, the Heavenly Father was saying You know, through the prophet Hosea In Hosea 4 and 6 You know So you, you, you um, carnalites You pretty much made your bed And now you got a lie in it Alright 
Um, let's go to the book of it's a rock I called for. Ecclesiasticus chapter 12 and verse 10 and you see look man when when are people going to realize well i mean i I know the answer to the question you know uh isaiah 6 you know the lord is he's made the heart of these people's fat so so ultimately they can't receive the truth you know and and the only time they're going to understand the truth is when it's too late when that judgment is set that's when Two thirds of our people will then receive this truth with open arms, and by then it's going to be too late, man. Because Ecclesiastes 12 says, To remember thy creator in the days of thy youth, not when you're now neck deep in calamities, and then that's when you want to seek the Lord and repent, man. Come on, man, it, it, it don't work like that, you know. So, um, let's get to Rock 12 and 10, and it reads, Never trust thine enemy. Who's our enemy? Esau Edom You know and, and the head tribe of Esau Edom Is Amalek And I believe in uh, I forget where in Exodus But in Exodus it talks about how You know Amalek is the people That the Lord will have war against From generation to generation Alright And and you know We, we was warring even in um, uh, uh, In the womb With Esau Edom man in Genesis 25 You know we was warring even then So you know Esau's always been our enemy man And always will be So Sirach 12 and 10 Never trust thine enemy Okay For like as iron rusteth So is his wickedness So sometimes you know Because you see Esau Edom He speaks in that sweet voice You know That, that, that soft feminine voice Because you know Ultimately they got a feminine spirit on them so you know it's very easy to fall for it, man. Let's let, before we continue on, let's quickly bring out Psalms 55. Where's Psalms? Have me. I'm in transit. So this is Psalms 55. And uh, verse 21 And it reads The words of his mouth Were smoother than butter See when Esau is speaking Alright He got that real soft voice man You know He got that real soft voice And, and he come with them smooth words He tell you the words you want to hear Okay And then, and then, and then you only realise that, 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 that it was evil Once it's too late Okay, like a lot of the people that took the um, 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 the jump shot, you know, the thing in their arm, booster and everything, you know. Now, now all of a sudden people are dying, and 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 you know, the reason is known now. So Psalm sixty-five and twenty-one, the words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. You see, he says one thing and he does the other, man. And this is how he deceives you Okay It says but war was in his heart um, His words were softer than oil Yet they were drawn swords And even like if you go If you look back in time And you look at how The northern kingdom got taken over You know Esau Edom He came in peace He came in peace but then didn't he damn near like slaughter out all of them man he, he almost wiped out the entire uh, 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 nation of Gad Tribe of Gad He almost wiped them out entirely man You know he couldn't put down his sword for long Okay but he, he came in peace man This is the same devil that we're dealing with today In 2023 Okay And, and you know Ain't nothing changed man Ecclesiastes says There's nothing new under the sun So get with the program man And stop trying to Put this devil in a, in a, in a box In a category that he's not I'm Trying to paint him as being this righteous guy Or oh he's a changed man now Oh oh, that was back then That, that was the past No man what, what does it say in Romans 15 and 4 It says how 
the things written aforetime were written for our learning, right? Not not just some mere uh, uh, fairy tale books, some some you know just some storytelling, some bedtime stories, man. These these things were written for our learning, man, so that we would know how to move in these times. Okay. So let's go back to Sirach, Ecclesiasticus, chapter twelve. And uh, we read verse 10 But let's read it again anyway For edification's sake uh, So Sirach 12 and 10 Never trust thine enemy For as iron rusteth So is his wickedness Okay Don't trust him Don't take that C hit uh, Verse 11 Though he humble himself and go crouching Yet take good heed And beware of him Alright Don't be deceived and, and let me tell you this The elect Will not be deceived man The elect Will not be deceived Okay uh, So though he humble himself And go crouching Yet take good heed And beware of him And thou shalt be Hold on a second Around about Yet take good heed And beware of him And thou shalt be unto him As if thou Has wiped a looking glass And thou shalt know That his rust Have not been altogether wiped away So if you really Pay attention to the devil And you read in between the lines and, 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 and you know You don't just take everything at face value You'll be able to see This is the same devil Right And, and, and he ain't changed Esau Edom Was made to be wicked So how can something that was made to be wicked All of a sudden be righteous man No Read Romans 9 And, 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 and uh, I'm 22 On down Okay. Uh, yeah, I think I pretty much made the point on that. Um, let's go to the book of Wisdom of Solomon. It's Wisdom of Solomon 3, verse 1, and it reads But the souls of the righteous are in the hand of the Most High. And there shall no torment touch them So you see we don't need to worry about The threats that Esau or Edom uh, Comes up with You know trying to get us to take his uh, See it Okay Because hey look man As I said Some of us may have to die for this truth As a testament of our faith You know So either ways So it's either you die for this truth Or you die uh, uh, um, You know you died the death of the wicked Following after Esau and, and you know Ultimately that's going to be Way worse for you man The choice is yours Okay So once again Wisdom of Solomon 3 and 1 And, and we already know man Like you know Death Really ain't death You're just being uh, You're, 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 you're going to uh, Be translated Into your spiritual body man And as I said Those who die In this truth who die in Yahweh Shai They're going to be raised up first And then those that remain here on earth The elect that remain here on earth Shall be joined onto them man But the dead in Yahweh Shai Will be raised up first You see What's this guy doing um, Let's jump down to verse 9 I'm going to close out here This is Wisdom of Solomon 3 and 9 and it reads They that put their trust in him Shall understand the truth Okay You trust in Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahashai You're going to understand this truth You're going to receive this wisdom, knowledge and understanding Isaiah 11 talks about how I will make thee of quick understanding He's not just going to make anyone Of quick understanding He's going to make the elect Those he wants The desirable of quick understanding man Not just any old nigger Any old wicked nigger man Okay. 
It says in the scriptures to, to, to cast not your pearls among swine. Okay? So wisdom of Solomon 3 and 9. They that put their trust in him shall understand the truth. One more time, Salaki. They that put their trust in him shall understand the truth, and such as be faithful in love shall abide with him. For grace and mercy is to his saints, and he hath care for his elect. And you see, the Lord is going to show um, in these last days that he hath care for his elect. Because, you know, if you read in Wisdom of Solomon 2, you know, they pretty much, you know, the people of the world pretty much think that the Lord has forsaken us, man. And we're out here just, um, damn, what is he doing? And we're out here just looking like fools. You see. But, you know, the world is in for a rude awakening, man. That's for sure. The world is in for a rude awakening, man. And you know what? I'm going to close out on, um, uh, on, on Luke 18. Okay. I haven't brought this out in a little while as well. This is a... Luke 18 and verse 7. And it reads, And shall not the Most High avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? So, you know, although the Heavenly Father, it seems like he's taking a long time. What does it say in Habakkuk 2 and 3? Though it tarry, wait for it, for it will surely come. It will not tarry. Right? Meaning it will not delay. You know? Remember, according to 2 Peter 3, um, a, um, um, a day with the Lord is as a thousand years to us. You know? So so in the Lord's eyes, Yahweh Shai was, was crucified two days ago, man. So that's still a short time. Okay? Um, so Luke 18 and 7 And shall not the Most High avenge his own elect Which cry day and night unto him Though he bear long with them Verse 8 I tell you I tell you That he will avenge them speedily Okay This is the faith that we gotta have Cause yeah Right now it seems like all odds are stacked up against us But, but you know The Lord is gonna make a way for his elect man Okay I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? You know, and, and this is a rhetorical question, but really and truly, the reason why it's asked is because this world is in such a state of perpetual wickedness. You know? And um, 2nd Ezra 8 and 3 says For there are many created But few shall be saved man You know um, There's not that many Out here Living righteously Living according to um, 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 The will of the Lord You know live, Living a righteous life Should I say Okay So that's why that question was asked But yes Yahweh Shem Yahashai We will find faith on the earth And that's elect man And that's his elect Which again is a small number all right so you know that's pretty much it um yeah man main point do not take that see hit don't take that 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 uh the motb man oh my goodness i didn't even get the scripture there was what there was one particular scripture i actually wanted to bring out you know i'm, I'm gonna just park this car because i got to my destination and um, I'm, I'm gonna bring it out you know, Thawari Yahaw Bashim Yahashai for reminding me. Let me just go to it now in case it escapes me. You know, but do not take that sea hit, man. In fact, let's bring out these two scriptures. Let's start off with um, this Revelation 16. One second, just parking up. Of the book of Revelation, chapter 16. Oh my day, I just seen one of my colleagues. She might try and say something. So lucky in advance. Um, Revelation 16 and 2. Let's start at the top. It says, And I heard a voice. 
heard a voice out of uh, the temple saying, hold on a second. So lucky, just Edomites being Edomites. Anyways, as I was saying, uh, Revelation 16 and 1, and I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of the Most High upon the earth. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth. And there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the B-E-A-S-T. And upon them which worshipped his image. And now this noisome and grievous sore is really referring to a, to, to a cancer. You know, because it's bad enough as it is that we have to deal with all this radiation. You know, you got the, you got the phones, you got these phone towers, you got you got the internet, and and you you got the five G and you name it, man. We have to deal with all this radiation as it is, which causes cancer. Now you're gonna have that directly under your skin. So so you know, you're pretty much gonna be a. Um, 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 your body's going to be producing pus continuously and, and, and you know, those cancerous cells are, are going to keep growing and expanding and ultimately, you know, it's going to destroy you. Okay, these are the things that um, the people of the world are not taking into consideration. They're just taking into consideration. Oh, yeah, you know, you can make payments easily now. Uh, yeah, don't need to roll around with my wallet anymore and so on and so forth, man. But, but what, what about the health implement, imp, uh, um, um, implications, man? You know, it's the same thing. When the cigarettes came about, everyone and their doctors was, was doing it, man. Smoking, thinking it was healthy, uh, no harm would come of it. And then later on, research came out saying how smoking causes cancer and so on and so forth, you know. But that came out, I, I would say, maybe like a good 20 years or so. Uh, you know, a, a, a good couple of years later, that knowledge was revealed. You know, but um, hold on. It's another one of my colleagues it's walking by, but yeah, um, but you know, um, in twenty twenty, people were quick to jump and take that 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 the Crown Vic, you know, the serpent's juice, <laughs> the jump shot, you know. Without doing any research, doing their homework, taking time to see, well, will this actually be beneficial to the body or will it harm me? You know, pe people just, just jumped straight into, into the fire, man, and, and, they, and they took it. Now, here we are three years later, we've got people dying from taking those, those, those um, uh, you know, for taking the jump shots, booster and everything, man. Okay. Um, last scripture. Revelation 14 and uh, this is the book of Revelation chapter 14 and verse 9 and the third angel followed them saying with a loud voice if any man worship the B-E-A-S-T and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of the Most High, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Okay? The Lamb is Yahweh Shai. So, pretty much, you take that MOTB, you're going to eat a nuclear missile, man. You are marked for destruction. You are marked for death if you take that MOTB, verse 11, and the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, which, you know, doesn't mean literally forever, but, you know, um, Babylon the Great, a.k.a. America, that's going to be burning for a very long time. And all those other uh, parts of uh, uh, the other lands as well that, that will have nukes shot at them, they're going to be burning for a very long time. Okay. 
and they have no rest day on day nor night who worship the b-e-a-s-t and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name okay so this is the judgment that's going to come for you man if you take that 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 c hip the m-o-t-b so don't take it man you know when esau eden presents you with this device and tries to threaten your 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 your, your livelihood your job your money you being able to eat or drink or function in society, don't worry about it, man. Proverbs 3 and 5, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding, man. All right? But, you know, I've pretty much made the point on that now. So, you know, um, hopefully this lesson has been edifying. And until the next time, I say shalom.